Hello guys, this is Joni, and um, I have uh, come back tonight to finish out the uh, arrangement that I started making the other time. I made the one little bunny, and I have the second bunny that I had with him last year, and I wanted to go ahead and fix her in a box also so that I can use her, uh, both of them, in my living room. And... Um, I put him in the carrots, if you'll remember, and I'm gonna put her in the green beans. So between them both, they should be able to have enough food that they won't have to worry about. So that's what I have decided to do tonight for you guys. And um, I'll go ahead and get this started. This oasis is a mess, but uh, it's a lot easier than trying to push through that really heavy. I'm going to get some different glue, I know that. Um, foam that they have that is so hard you would need. I'm going to, when I use that from now on, I'm going to use my awl on it to push the holes instead of trying to just manually get them down in there. I don't know what in the world is wrong with that glue. It's absurd it's so and I'm gonna build her just a little bit higher than what I built him and um, I don't think that it will matter that this one is just a little bit crooked I better see what she says about that if I can get the glue to hold it exactly where I want her she'll be fine but um, I saw where <laughs> all of you guys, or a, a lot of you guys, really liked the um, story I told the other night when uh, I fixed the other one. Um, it's almost inconceivable to think that there are people who would go around restaurants and things like that having conversations like that, but um, they did, and like I said, we stayed here for four months, and that was the only time that uh, we ran into anything like that, so um, it was um, aggravating, but at the same time, after the situation was over, it was... Um, funny, but uh, I could only imagine if you had been sitting there and um, you had uh, taken your parent or a loved one there and, sat and been sitting there and heard that conversation. I think that there would have been some things said stronger than what I did. I can only guess what I would have said if um, I had run into a situation like that that and it had been pertaining to one of my loved ones. But um, it, it was hilarious. So that's what we took away from it was just how funny it was when we got away from it. Now, while we were there, believe me, it was not funny. And neither did the uh, older couple find it hilarious, nor any of the other people sitting around. But um, we just um, let it go after I called. And I could see him actually in my mind because I could tell what he was doing because I had watched him so much when we were sitting at the restaurant. Um, I could see him looking around everywhere trying to find who in the world was talking to him. <laughs> because um, there were too many details that he was being asked about that um, no one would know unless they had first-hand information. 
<laughs> but he had provided plenty of that firsthand information. And um, that little piece of, I have to glue that little piece of stuff back on her. Thing it's come loose. But um, that was something else. And like I've said, I've had so many things that have happened to me over the course of my life that like that. And it's um, wild, <laughs> to say the least. Now, she'll be okay as soon as I can get some greenery in there to back her up a little bit. And I went ahead and, and um, had the foresight to go ahead and take those wires, those little tiny wires, out of those things that uh, I could hardly get loose the other time. They were nasty. It's the smallest, smallest of wires I've ever seen, but uh, I have glue, looks like it's growing out the ends of my fingernails. Um, but it is strong. I do mean strong. That oasis is there we go. I'm trying I've got the other little bunny sitting over here and I'm trying to um, look at it to see exactly where I have uh, some of this stuff placed some of this greenery because it would ha hard, be hard to uh, make one exactly alike unless you had something to uh, a frame of reference, let's say. So I just moved him over here to keep her company while <laughs> doing the decorating. She looks like a dutiful little wife. She's carrying her flowers and She's wanting things to work out very nicely for her husband and for herself. As all wives do. I, one of the ladies wrote, wrote to me, I got tickled about it. She said, I really don't think that you had enough greenery on your, um, let's see, on your right side. <laughs> and I had been looking at it prior to her writing, and I had thought that I didn't have enough. I knew that I had left out a piece that I could see quite clearly on the uh, left side. And I wrote her back and I said, that is really funny. I said, I was just sitting here uh, looking at uh, the video of that. And I saw that I thought that um, I needed a piece of greenery there on the left side. <laughs> and I said, then you write me and tell me that I, I need a piece on the, uh, I thought it should go on the left. And I said, and you thought I needed it on the right. And uh, I, I just put ha ha, you know, and, and was laughing about it because, um, we all see things so differently. It's uh, funny when you think about it, how differently uh, we can see things. And uh, that's like they say we are with car accidents. There can be a car accident and there can be 10 or 12 people see that. And no two people will hardly ever see it the same way. Wild. But true. I 
I've had one car accident, and um, I had uh, gone to um, pick up my granddaughter at school. She had just gotten out of um, uh, her school, and uh, my daughter was with me, and we went over to pick her up, and um, we had her in the car, and we were on our way to go shopping, <laughs> as is usual. And um, we are going down the street and I think, okay, now I know I'm gonna have to go over down here when I get down to this light. So I was on a double lane highway with uh, a median in uh, the middle and then there were, the oncoming traffic was over, oh, on the other side of the median. So, um, I knew that I had to uh, get on the left, in the left lane, so that when I got down there, I would be able to cross. So I went ahead and got over in the left side of the median, and I was ready to cross and go up the street that I needed to go, because I had to go to the bank, and um, before we went shopping, which makes good sense. And uh, so uh, we got down there and the uh, light was uh, green and all the traffic was just going through and everything. And uh, so I just uh, went right on through the light and uh, I crossed over into the left side like I um, normally would. And about that time, Tanya says, Mom, look out, look out, because she's in the back seat with my granddaughter. A car's gonna hit you. And I said, what in the world? Because there, there, there was a red light holding the other people back so that they couldn't come forward. I was the one that had the green light. And um, she said, and about that time, I heard the stuff start to hit him. And I thought, oh my goodness sakes, I'm mercy. Now what? So I stopped the car and I got out. And I went out and I looked. And I had just gotten my car probably, oh, maybe 10 months or so before that. And um, I really liked it and everything. And uh, my front wheel was all torn up. She had hit me almost sideways as I had gone to get in the left lane. And I was sort of in a semi-diagonal position. She hit me in the side. And to do that, she had to run a red light because her light was red. But she was late to pick her daughter up, and her daughter was way down below where my daughter, granddaughter went to school. And I had already picked her up and had her in the car, and we were headed, like I said, to the bank to go so we could go shopping. But she still had not even picked her daughter up yet, so I am saying, she was running late and she ran the red light so that she could get down there to pick her daughter up. And um, she did not want to call the police. And um, I said, I'm sorry, but we have to call the police. We can't have something like this happen and not call the police. And she said, well, we don't really have to. She said, I'll just go ahead and get my daughter. She said, I have to get her. I get. I have to get her picked up. And I said, well, I understand that, and I really am sorry about it. But uh, we have to uh, notify the police if there's been an accident and everything. And uh, she said, well, I would rather just go ahead. And I said, well, I'm sure that you would, and, and I would rather just go ahead and forget about this too. I said, but my car is too torn up because it was really, the um, like I said, the wheel was all knocked in and 
and the front front fender was all dented and it was a mess and uh, she was in this very old old um, car that looked like a um, oh what do you call them uh, I forget what they call them they're sort of a a, not a four-wheeler, a, um, something like, um, these that are heavy-duty things that you can drive in snow and all this stuff, and them, I forget the names of them, and, uh, it was rusted, and it had dents in it, I don't know how many, and, uh, she said, um, well, I would love to just go ahead and get my uh, daughter. And I said, well, I said, I'm sure that, uh, so my daughter had already called the police. And um, they were on their way. So um, I said, well, I'm sure that uh, they will uh, take care of your daughter until you can get there. They're not going to let anything happen to her. I said, I know that I would be worried too if uh, I hadn't picked up my granddaughter yet. And uh, she said, um, well, she said, I just have to get up there and there's no way around it. And uh, so about that time, the policeman came and bless your heart, he said, uh, who all was in, involved in the accident? And I said, well, I said, I have my granddaughter and my daughter in my car. And I said, um, the lady is driving alone. I said, she's alone in her car. And um, I said, uh, she must have run a red light because I had the green light and the traffic behind me the traffic behind me went ahead. That shows you that I still had the green light, even after she hit me. And um, she said, oh no, she said, um, I, I didn't uh, run a red light. She said, um, you pulled in front of me. Well, the only way I could have pulled in front of her was that she would be coming out from um, the light that was turned red on her. And uh, she said that my light was green and I had a green light to go. And um, by this time we had pulled over. He had us pull over to a lot that was all oh, just across the street from where the accident was. And he was an older man. She was a younger woman. And um, she was dressed up and everything. And um, I had just been dressed to go shopping. I wasn't dressing up to just go out for dress, in other words. I was just planning on going shopping. And uh, he said, well, I'm not familiar with this uh, area, but he's investigating the accident, but he's not familiar with it. He didn't even know where the street was that it happened on, and it was just, I could stand there and look and see the street and the light and everything. And I said, it's right over there. I said, it's plain, plain view. And um, I said, take a look at my car and see if you can find any dents or bumps or anything in it other than the ones that just was put in it. I said, and take a look at hers because by this time she's flat denying that she hit me. She said it was my fault. And he just took right in and I said, ask my daughter and my granddaughter what happened. I said, they were in the car. They should, they'll tell you what happened. He said, I'm sorry, he said, we're not allowed to let anyone that's in the vehicles 
uh, tell anything about the accidents. Well, that just blew my mind because maybe that's a new rule or something, but I sure, well, I hadn't been in any, any accidents, so I would have no reason to know uh, what was going on. And uh, I don't know if it was true or if he was just saying that or what was going on, but uh, he said, um, uh, I can't let them give any witness um, statements at all. And I said, well, I sure don't know why you can't. I said, because they were right there. And I said, my daughter is the one that saw her coming at me. And she hollered at me. And I said, if she had not hollered, I said, I would have been going on over in that lane because I was free to go because I had the green light to go. And he said, well, he said, um, I think I'm going to have to say that it was your fault. So, he said it was my fault that the accident occurred and that... Uh, he didn't think that she was really running the red light, but uh, she was just going through her light and it had turned her, uh, gray, uh, green. And, oh my goodness. When you've been unjustly treated that way and you know that you're telling the truth, and the other person isn't, it's really hard to take. But uh, Tanya is a paralegal also, so <laughs> she, she's pretty good to have around from time to time. <laughs> so she's, she just walked up beside me and she said, Mom, she said, you may as well keep quiet. Said he has made up his mind. And she said he's really too old to be um, um, giving any information about what's going on, investigating any information about what's going on. She said, but, um, and by this time, all the eyewitnesses had, other than my daughter and my granddaughter, of course, had gone on through the traffic and no one stopped. And uh, so uh, I was just in the left field all alone, you might say. And um, because she was younger than I was, um, he took her word for it. And he thought that it was my age that had caused the accident. And he took us and went over to see what the street looked like. And I told him which lane I was in, how she had to be have run a red light or she couldn't have gotten to me in the first place if she had stopped at the red light. And um, so um, he just goes ahead with it and says, uh, well, I will just have to fault you for the accident. So Tanya tells me, Mom, just be quiet, don't say anything. Well, she knows, Mom, when I get really riled up, it's, um, it's one thing to be unjustly treated and something else just to have somebody, you do something and you get caught for it. If it had been my fault, I would have said it was my fault. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, but I didn't see her. her. But it wasn't my fault. And um, so it was a mess. But she never did. She, Tanya said she is thanking the good Lord that she is getting out of this as easy as she is. And she will not cause you a drop of trouble as far, far as uh, filing charges or anything. And I held my breath. I mean, I held my breath for that time because um, um, she could have um, sued me because of his 
judgment. And then I would have been in a world of trouble. So, uh, but I think she knew that she had escaped once and she had better just stay on her side of the fence from then on and keep quiet about it. Because she knew how upset I was, that I was being falsely accused. I can't stand to be falsely accused of something. Yeah, if I do it, somebody says, well, so-and-so, it something happened. Then I'll first to admit it, but nope, not when I'm being falsely accused. But that was my one, in about 60 years of driving, that was my one accident. And uh, you might know. <laughs> Oh dear, person can get in a lot of messes for people not telling the truth. But I, I never even investigated to see if, if it was true that um, you can't take testimony from someone driving in the car. I still don't know if that's true or not. Because I just wanted out of it, away from it, and away from her because I didn't want to have anything else to do with her. Because to me, she proved what she was like by uh, telling what she did. So, okay, here is my Bunny, he, he needs to go down, I think, just a little bit. I think maybe I need to put some greenery right there. Maybe that'll help him. Mm, maybe a little bit of purple. I am really into purple and pink this summer. This summer. This spring. I love it. I think it is so pretty. she is and I'll get him and set him oh and like the story I told you when I fixed her uh, I mean him the other day I, I guess it was about two weeks ago that I made him I said that I think they had been visiting Mr. McGregor's um, garden <laughs> getting their vegetables for the winter that's her. And this is him. I think they'll look cute, um, possibly on my mantle. They're not exactly alike, but they're alike enough to, uh, my glasses are falling half off. I'm still wearing the ones that she has just a little more purple and flowers, which is okay because she is a lady. And he has the carrot. <laughs> He's been harvesting the carrots out of the garden. So that's uh, my interpretation of the bunnies. And they're, I may have to try to do something to move her. Ah, I heard them. Styrofoam. It's okay. Break. The glue came loose. I can glue it back. But she, I can prop her up with something. I'll take a piece of long uh, stem off of one of my flowers and put it up beside her. But um, this is the way she looks. And then that's the way he looks. It's hard to see them in here. I'll take pictures in the morning. And um, um, then I'll put her up in the morning and let you guys see her. And this is uh, the back of her with her little dress showing. She is really much looser than what I thought. 
I'm going to have to glue her right there. That must have been what I heard pop. Hold her for just a minute until she dries some. I've been trying my best to get you guys answered, but when uh, I'm answering with my glasses like they are, it is so hard. I, I have to use also a magnifying glass now. If you can imagine sitting with a, your iPad, because um, I don't use my Mac uh, computer. I use uh, the um, iPad. And I use my iPad and uh, my glasses and a um, magnifying glass. So it takes me a while to get through with all that. And then it's hard on my vision too. Because if you all remember, I was having trouble before when I was having to use my glasses backward to uh, read before I, when I had my surgery. I need another bunch of little greenery in there. But just a short piece, not a long piece. But, um, hoping if the winds ever die down and the viruses in Virginia. They say there's so many viruses in Virginia that I, I'm almost afraid to go up there because um, I don't need to get a virus on top of everything else I've got going on. I don't know. I may just stick that curl that down in there or cut it off a little bit probably be better yeah that looks better there we go that one looks just a bit long too okay all right We'll call this one finished. She looks like she's standing up straighter now, too. So, uh, uh, I will answer you guys just as soon as I possibly can. And uh, know that I'm trying as best. As, and I'll look at you, and you'll see how crooked my glasses are. <laughs> I don't have any makeup on, so you'll have to excuse the way I look. But um, I'll talk with you guys later. And um, I want to thank you for all my new subscribers. I'm still getting a lot of new subscribers. And uh, um, I hope, I, I'm really happy. They all say that they're very happy with my channel. And um, they like to watch me craft and make things. And that pleases me greatly because um, I like to make, uh, crafts and to uh, make things that please other people and everything and that's one of the parts of my nature I guess is I do like to please others and um, so uh, you guys take care of yourself and uh, thank you for all of you who have subscribed and if you are out there and you haven't subscribed if you would think about it I would appreciate it if you would and too, they say that if you are watching and you just give a thumbs up, uh, say you're already subscribed to me, uh, it helps uh, YouTube uh, a lot to uh, put my um, videos in the right order they're supposed to be or something. I don't know. And it's as to how much they're played and everything. So if you would also give me a thumbs up and uh, share with me, uh, somebody if uh, you think someone else that you know would enjoy my channel. But um, 
You guys take care and remember that I do love you. And, uh, and like I say, most of all, remember that God loves you much, much, much more than what I do. And I love you a lot. So take care and I'll talk with you later.